All right, guys, let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? I've gone over this a couple of times. I keep saying I'm going to do a review on this car and my thoughts and where we're at. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's go for a drive. I got to go into town and get something to drink anyways. Maybe something to munch on. I'm not sure. But anyways, <laughs> let's uh, talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> All right, guys, so we'll start off, let me get out of my driveway here. We'll start off with uh, why this car, okay? So back in 2008, like I said previously in another video, I happened to see, you know, the first iteration of the modern day Challenger. And I gotta tell you, um, I was really impressed with it. Um, I mean, this car here is by far a much better car than the first version <laughs> of the Challengers uh, that they remade. So it's a lot better than the old muscle car in a lot of ways too, and I'll get, I'll get to that. Um, Long story short, I saw the car and I told myself back then, you know, uh, I want one. So, fast forward, I was uh, not financially in a place that I felt comfortable enough to go and buy one until I was, you know, a little bit older. And I'm glad that I waited because, like I said, this car is a lot better than the first all right, take two. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but my camera mounts, for whatever reason, they uh, they don't like to stay. <laughs> I honestly don't know what the deal is. So as I was saying, yeah, my, uh, so I bought the car. Um, I've always had kind of a close relationship with muscle cars, things like that. I'm a big fan of the V8, I really am. I, obviously, everybody sees my channel knows this. So, now it's getting a little dark, but hopefully you guys can see me all right. So anyways, I picked this car for the simple reason that I really like the body lines. I like the fact that it follows a lot of the heritage of the original Challenger. Um, it really is, you know, like the only car like it I mean there's <laughs> Mustang is okay you know it's gotten kind of European and the Camaro well yes it is fast and it is a cool car uh, it's just not my style I, I I just don't I can't feel it guys like I'm just not I'm not really into it so let's move on to what I think now I have put 13,700 miles on this car and um, I have not been disappointed. You can kick this thing in a corner, get it sideways, spin the tires, go the drag strip, do all these things. Now, it is not a fast car. Uh, for all the people out there that might think about buying an RT, understand what you're getting yourself into. It is a muscle car. It's not a sports car. It's not a fast car. Uh, you're definitely quicker than a lot of other vehicles that are on the road. Probably about 85% of the vehicles you run into, they're, uh, <laughs> They're not gonna hang with you if you put your foot in it, you know how to drive. So, <clears throat> you gotta understand at the price point that this car is, you know, I mean, I paid less than 40,000 for this car, brand new, 2021. Uh, I'm not I'm not really saying that uh, it, that's the best, but I'm not saying it, it, it's not the worst either. Um, <clears throat> this car particularly, this car came with, uh, the sport track kind of style suspension. It's lowered from the factory. It's got stiffer springs. Uh, K uh, it's got uh, Bilstein shocks and struts in it. It feels very solid, very planted. I've taken it through mountain roads already, windy roads and stuff, and I'm pretty impressed for something that's, uh, well, like I said, the elephant in the room. You know, she's what, 4,100 and some change? 
that's before my big butt gets in it. So yeah, um, I'm not I'm not disappointed. As far as the review goes, there is one thing it's lacking. I think it could use a little more horsepower. Um, I think that long tube headers, a tune, and a few little things like that would definitely bring it into the realm of what this car should be from the factory. Uh, I do believe that the tires they give you for these cars are terrible. Uh, they're the 245s. I mean, they're okay for the average Joe, I guess, but if you want to get down and dirty and you want to be able to hook, go around a corner, launch the car, you definitely need a lot more tire because I can blow the tires off on this thing um, <laughs> through like second gear and I don't have to power brake it. So, needs more rubber. Uh, as far as everything else goes, I mean, the car has the sound, it has the look, it has everything about it that's amazing. Um, you know, let's talk some facts and some numbers here, okay? Just real quick. This car is 375 horsepower and 410 foot-pounds of torque, okay? Now, matched with the right amount of gearing, that makes a pretty heavy arsenal on the road. Um, you know, the original 440 Challenger, or not 440, the, sorry, that would be, that'd be different, but uh, the original <laughs> 340 Challenger, uh, back in the day, I'm sorry, it won't hang with this car. And this car is, you know, it's got your creature comforts. It's got a decent stereo. Could be a little better, but I didn't opt for the best sound system. Um, it does have air conditioning. It has heating. It's very comfortable. The seats are bolstered, almost like a race seat. So, you know, you, you, I call them fat huggers. <laughs> they kind of hold in your fat, keep you in the chair. So, um, it's comfortable. I feel like I could take this car and go on a long road trip and it wouldn't hurt me. So, I mean, I don't know what you guys really think about the Challenger. I'm quite curious, you know, leave in the comments or something and, and ask and let me know what you guys think. But personally, I think that the Challenger at price point is probably one of the best all around cars that you can get. Now, not everybody wants a V8. They have V6s. Granted, they do. I personally would not buy this car with a V6 because I think it's already a little anemic with the 5.7 Hemi. So with a V6, I would not be happy with this car. I'll be honest with you. Now, as far as as far as performance goes, I've ran up against some guys that I don't know. Maybe I was just a better driver than them. I don't know. But I thought for sure they were gonna just run away from me like I was sitting still, and that didn't happen. Uh, they did walk a little bit, but they didn't really run. They were perfectly okay with uh, thinking they could outrun me. And at the end of the day, when we were, we were done, we were doing, uh, they were like, yeah, I was really shocked. I didn't think that car would run like it does. Because everybody out there on the internet talks about how trash these cars are and how slow they are and how they're boats and they're this and they're that. Everybody downplays the Challenger RT. Like we get almost as much hate in the car community as guys with four cylinders and V6s and our 5.7 7 Hemis. okay? <laughs> That's not a lie, that truly happens. I don't know why that is. Um, I didn't buy this car to be the fastest thing on the planet. I bought this car because I really enjoy it. I like the heritage behind it. Uh, I think that Dodge did a really good job. They have a pretty rigid platform. I mean, there's some things that I'm gonna improve to make the car better, but that's any car. I don't care what you buy. You buy a Corvette, you're gonna spend money on it. You buy a Ferrari, you're gonna spend money on it. It doesn't really matter what car it is. You're gonna make it how you want it. And I'm all about that. You know, that's that one life thing. <laughs> but moral of the story is, yes, it's not a fast car. It's a quick car. Uh, it holds its own against most vehicles on the road. The fuel economy is actually pretty decent if you keep your foot out of it. It handles pretty well, actually. I mean, you gotta think about it. This car has all-wheel independent suspension, so the rear end does a pretty good job with hooking up. It's not too bad, especially, you know, uh, mitigating corners and things. It does, the springs don't become unhappy really easy. You have to work at that. So, <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what you guys really wanna know any further about the car I mean all I did to this is 
it's got a mid muffler delete to give her some sound and uh, with all factory everything else is factory still has cats still factory tuned um, and I did a cold air intake system from Mopar um, I did that I think probably I think the first week that I had the car I put both those on <laughs> no it didn't add any power it's not any quicker but it definitely sounds nicer and it looks nicer when you open the hood so as far as ownability of the car, it's very practical. Uh, it has a huge trunk. I mean, you, you could fit just about anything in there. I mean, the seats fold down and everything. You, you can use this car. It's not, you know, my cousin had a Mustang and that thing fit me like a glove. It was great as far as drivability, but realistically, realistically, as far as putting luggage in the car and going on a road trip or anything like that, yeah, that's not happening. It's, and if it does, it's going to be really tight and you're going to be limited on what you take. This thing here, it's got a pretty decent back seat. I mean, the car is big. It's a full-size car. When you park this car next to a Mustang or a Camaro, this thing looks like a monster. It's huge. But it has a trunk, which makes this car practical. So you get some of the speed that you want. You get the looks. You get the sound. You know, you get the the usability the, the, as far as being you uh, you as far as being um, you know usable on a daily basis. I should say, I'm a little tongue twisted here. Sorry, I'm in traffic, guys. I just figured I might screw up a little bit here. Anyways, uh, that's what makes this thing really cool in my eyes is the fact that you can actually take it on a road trip. You, you'll be comfortable. Uh, it doesn't beat you to death. The seats are pretty squishy. The sound system's halfway decent. The AC in it is, is amazing. The transmission in this thing, when you put it in sport mode, uh, it is snappy when it goes into gear. It's great. Uh, I've gotten, you know, like 24 miles, 20, 25 miles a gallon in this thing. So for 410 foot-pounds of torque and 375 horsepower, uh, 25 miles a gallon is nothing to snarl at. <clears throat> Visibility is, okay, I'm looking around right now and I can see everything around me. Um, the Camaro is not like that. <laughs> As my buddy says who owns a Camaro, driving it, he feels like he's Ray Charles. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking, like he, he literally says that and he loves that car. But I can actually see all the way around this thing. It's not too bad. You know, the quarter windows are pretty decent. I can see behind me. Uh, visibility in the front, even though it is a long nose car, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, so if you guys want to know anything else or anything like that as far as the car goes, you know, leave me uh, leave me some comments. Subscribe, like to my you know, subscribe to my channel. Give me some likes. I'm trying to get this little channel going, guys. And uh, the other thing I didn't touch base on is the suspension. Okay, so this car, the design of this car originally was back in the Chrysler. Daimler area, and I don't know if you guys know what that is, but that was like the Mercedes era of the Chrysler, okay? So the, the suspension design originates off of an older uh, Mercedes, so it's it's not a terrible suspension. It's it's pretty, pretty decent for the most part. Um, <clears throat> the brakes, I haven't felt any brake fade, and I've been, you know, I've gone down through some some uh, hills and things like that and put some you know pretty pretty decent amount of stress strain on the brakes they didn't really fade or go anywhere or drive up drop out on me so I didn't feel any brake fade or anything like that it, like I said for the price point you got to remember guys this is a thirty five thirty eight thousand dollar car okay um, if you get into a scat pack sure scat packs gonna be a lot more car than this one is but you're also paying a lot more I mean, given what I paid for this, it would—it's almost twenty thousand dollar difference, guys. You know, think of what I could do with this car with twenty thousand dollars in my pocket to spend. Just hang on to that thought for a minute, because in the future she's going to get some goodies, and it'll probably—it'll probably run about like a Scat Pack, or it's going to run faster. I don't know. We're going to see. But <clears throat> that's down the road a ways. But what I'm telling you is, don't listen to all of the hype on the internet about 
certain vehicles because there's certain cars that I've driven and gotten in where everybody was, uh, oh man, this car's amazing. It's fast, it's this, it's that. And you know what? The car sucked. It was awful. It rode like shit. It was terrible. And then there's other cars like this one that people downplay and constantly say, you know, that don't waste your money, buy a faster car, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. This car's got all these flaws and all these things, right? And it just turns out that once you drive it and you own it and you're cruising it around a while, you find out that the car itself really isn't the problem, it's people's perception. You know, like I said before, everybody thinks that they, they see these cars that are 700, 800, you know, 1,000 horsepower, things like that, and they try to compare that car to this car. Well, that car's two or three times the price of this car. So from a price point, it's, it's unrealistic to think that a car made by any manufacturer at the price point that this one was made is going to be any kind of competitive with any of those other vehicles. I mean, we have to be realistic, right, about as far as <laughs> about what, what you really are going to get out of what you're paying for, you know. <clears throat> There's a reason a NASCAR is a $600,000 car or something like that. I don't, I don't even know anymore. I'm sure they're up there. They're pretty crazy. But there's a reason why they cost that much. There's a reason why a Bugatti costs, you know, $2 million. So my point being is, as far as the review goes on the car, uh, it's great. It's wonderful. It's, it's decently efficient. It's user friendly. Um, I haven't had any problems. I look over the car all the time. Uh, you know, she takes eight quarts of oil. That's the only thing that kind of hurts. So. <laughs> Eight quarts of oil is a little expensive when you're buying synthetic. But I mean, other than that, realistically, you know, there's not a whole lot of flaws that I could think of. Um, if you're looking for a super fast car that's going to be, you know, oohing and on people, the Challenger RT is not your car. If you're looking for a realistically usable car that is a muscle car, that has the look, has the sound, has some performance, can put you in the seat, slide you around corners, do some donuts, go down the drag drag strip and have a little fun and you know that just looks awesome coming down the road because it is a statement when you buy a challenger I don't care if you buy a demon a, uh, if you buy a Hellcat if you buy an RT anything in between you, you're, you're essentially making a statement right so <laughs> you know it is the only car like it there is no other car like it so anyways, with that being said, I'll bring you back when we get back to the house. All right, guys, welcome back home. I got a little bit of food and something to drink. I feel a lot better now. I think my blood sugar was getting a little uh, <clears throat> crazy on me there. Anyways, um, yeah, so where were we? Oh, yeah. Would I recommend the Challenger RT to somebody? Absolutely. And I'm not saying that because I'm biased or because... I only like one car. I'm a car enthusiast, okay? I like everything. I mean, as you see, I, I own a Toyota, I own a Harley, I own a Chevy, I own a Nissan, I own a Dodge. I am not a hater. So I think that every vehicle has its pluses and its minuses. They're all great in their own kind, right? And in their own way. So would I recommend it to a friend or somebody that asked me? Absolutely. Um, I think it's a practical car. Uh, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. And, you know, realistically, it's come down the wire now where they're talking about possibly discontinuing them. So, you know, that's going to make them a little bit harder to grab a hold of. Um, even though Dodge has produced a lot of Challengers, a lot of Chargers, uh, one thing you got to understand is they're a smaller company of the big three. So they don't, they haven't made as many as like Ford made with Mustangs. Um, but anyways, I'm getting off subject. So as far as the review goes, <laughs> I uh, I give the car, in my opinion, if, if 10 was the greatest car you could ever own, I give it a solid 7. And that's that's being honest. I mean, you know, with the handling cap uh, characteristics, uh, the ride quality, um, the fact that you can uh, punch it, you know, and have a little bit of fun. It gives you that feeling of a muscle car even in a modern day, I mean, the creature comforts that it comes with, all of the goods that come with this car far outweigh the fact that it's a little anemic. It, you know, if you can look past the fact that 
it's not the fastest thing out there, you know? I mean, <laughs> if you are looking for a car that is the fastest thing that you can buy, you know, the RT isn't for you. But if you want something that has class, has style, uh, it has character, and it, and it is what it is when you're coming up the road. I mean, like I said before, it's a statement. So if you're looking for something like that, and you want something like this guy right here, yeah, little Roxy, not guy, but little Roxy, okay? I highly recommend it. Don't don't uh, don't pass on it. And when you're sitting at a street light, honestly, don't sleep on one either. It don't take a lot of work if you know what you're doing to make a five seven be a street mauler. So I mean, it, it's very doable. I've seen it done. I've driven a few that were, and they were true street maulers. So <clears throat> don't don't uh, don't sleep on an RT. You know they're good cars, and. Like I said, I think price point wise, you, you get the best of every world. Now, if you want what I, you know, what Roxy is with an RT and you want that extra, you know, get you over the top kind of acceleration, I, I would highly recommend the, uh, the Scat Pack because the Scat Pack is everything that my car is and more. I mean, you, you get that, that uh, six, four power plant, you know, and a heavier duty transmission, and you get a different gearing in the back, you know, uh, and it's positive. It's, there's a lot of pluses to that car too, but understand with that car comes higher gas prices. You have to run heavier fuel in it. You know, you gotta run at least 92, 91, I think is, I think is the least. Um, you know, cost of repair, cost of ownership, gas mileage is less. So you're losing your practical, practicality of owning the vehicle. So yeah, I'm just gonna end it with my review on the car is a 7 out of 10, 10 being the greatest because of the fact that it's just a a really good solid platform. Um, you know, I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to put it out there and I, I don't want to make this video too long. I know I've kind of drawn it out. It's a little, a little long, probably like 20 minute video now. But seriously, um, go test drive one. Go check it out. Uh, if you got a buddy that owns one. See if he'll let you drive it. You know, you can also get this car in a six-speed. Mine's an auto. And a six-speed Challenger is a blast. It's a lot of fun to drive. So, like I said, don't sleep on the RT. Even though uh, even though she ain't the big dog in the game, she still holds her own. <laughs> so with that being said, you guys should uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Help me out here. And um, <clears throat> if you like the content that I have and different things, uh, I've got other videos coming soon, like with the Volkswagen motor. I've got some stuff filmed for that. I've got some stuff for Casper here. This little girl here, she's getting some work done to her. Things like that. If you uh, if you want to uh, see what I got going on, give me a like, subscribe, and follow. And please leave comments. You know, um, I'm really trying to interact with people. Um, I want you to um, feel free, feel comfortable. You know, I'm I'm a pretty nice guy. <laughs> I'll respond to you as fast as I can, and if you got any questions or anything you'd like to know about Roxy or, you know, any of my vehicles or anything that I've worked on and things like that, by all means, drop a comment. Anyways, y'all have a good one, okay? Thanks for stopping by.